love it or leave it. And we're back. <laughs> it's now time for a segment we call the Rant Wheel. We have this nifty wheel full of things we hate, and we'll spin it. And then one of us will pop the fuck off. Let's spin. On the wheel, we have people saying black bears aren't as dangerous as grizzly bears. <laughs> Obvious causes, the dumbing down of America, <laughs> having to hoard abortion pills, mantras, taking back the flag for the left, Mandy Moore snubbed every year for This Is Us, and the dehumanization of the service industry. Let's spin the wheel. It has landed on obvious causes, and this is my topic, and it's uh, just something um, we really struggle when there is a long-term, consistent source of all of our problems, but we're so used to it and so little is changing that it's boring, which means we look for other explanations. What made me want to talk about this is uh, there was, a, obviously there was, over the weekend, obviously every weekend there's a ton of shootings, but there were uh, at least two examples of horrible shootings where someone just went to the wrong door and then the person behind the door just starts shooting. And there's always the, 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 obviously a racial component, the fact that these people have guns and are not equipped or in the right headspace to, of course, be having them in their homes. All of that is true. But then a story came out in The Times and a few other places today where basically we found out that, of course, uh, uh, the person uh, that uh, just opened their front door and started shooting is a huge avid consumer of Fox News and spends all day sitting in a chair consuming this fucking nonsense, this addling nonsense that makes them afraid of their neighbors and afraid of the world and afraid of black people and afraid of immigrants. And it was just another reminder that, you know, there'll be a news cycle about how, oh, the left of the party is uh, 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 making it harder for moderates to win in Michigan, or there'll be a story about why are Democrats getting sucked into this terrible debate over this unpopular issue or this unpopular phrase like defund the police or abolish ICE. Uh, and they'll say, oh, it's the activists pulling the party to left. It's, it's the media, that it's the mainstream media not covering the problem. But no, the reason is there's this problem, which is a massive conservative propaganda apparatus that's pumping boomers and older people with fucking horseshit and terror and fear and anger and mistrust and division all day every day and the effects of it are fucking everywhere and it gets so boring people don't think of it as like the underlying cause of all this but uh it is republicans aren't there oh even the idea that everyone always says things like oh republicans they're so good at messaging are they are they dogs in cars aren't running really fast they're in a really fast car <laughs> That's a high thought. <laughs> Let's spin it again. Said it's 420. It's 420. Okay. Having to hoard abortion pills. Ooh. Beth, I think that's yours. That is me. Um, I'm just furious about being forced to hoard abortion pills. I mean, we all have less and less living space, higher rents, mortgages, um, work from home, blah, blah, blah. So, you know... We'd like to be using our limited hoarding abilities <laughs> on hoarding important things like our drag wardrobes and banned books. The important things to hoard. We need to be stockpiling 1984, Mouse, the Lorax. But no, we have to hoard abortion pills because who can even track what's happening with the rulings between you know, our what's the highest thought, and now the ruling, it's all so confused. It's changed like five times. Who can even track it? So the only solution, hoard abortion pills, but not Ritalin. Don't hoard the Ritalin. People need the Ritalin. People need the Ritalin, and there's a shortage. My boyfriend is needing the Ritalin. It's very hard to find. You but mean your boyfriend now that he can't find the Ritalin? <laughs> 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 That's <laughs> tough. Uh, because America is taking too much Ritalin, because we're working so hard, because we can't track what's happening with the abortion laws, and, you know, it's overproduction. So there you go. Anyway, I feel like basically I was watching The Handmaid's Tale for survival tactics, and it did not cover hoarding abortion pills. So yeah. anyway, that's my tip All and right. what's I making me mad that we're having to do. I don't see what's so complicated about the rulings. It's simply 
a partial stay of a partial stay of a partial stay <laughs> of a partial stay of an approval. Yeah, I'm, it's, well, you're more familiar with legal <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I did see, um, I was at JFK, because I don't fly into New Jersey, but um, <laughs> uh, they did have an abortion pill for sale in this, like, one of those kiosks at the airport at JFK. With like, but just you know, one. Like, no, they had like it was like they have one pill. They had like a they had like a bunch of you know like some like uh, like allergy pills and tampons and abortion pills and stuff like that. Not like a Hudson News, but like a you know like a fancier sort of airport. Was it, was it a store or was it like uh, like the machine? No, out of which it was they a sell store. IPhones. There was a woman working there, and they had a bunch of Plan Bs. They got a <laughs> they got a Shake Shack too over oh, there. Oh, the Plan B is after like the morning after. Just like you you that's like, so you don't have to have the abortion. There pill. you go, Judy. Because yeah. I was thinking it was so funny that people are like getting on this like airplane like really hungover. <laughs> like I probably fucked this guy last night. I don't remember. Oh, here's the Plan B. <laughs> right. Yeah. Never mind. There was no abortion pill at JFK. <laughs> <laughs> But you guys were listening, and that was really fun for me. <laughs> but if you do get really fucked up in New York City and maybe have sex with someone, and you're flying out the next morning from JFK, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> and that's important. You won't need her hoarded abortion pills. <laughs> that I say. A stitch in time saves nine, as they say. You know that saying. Yeah, I'm, I've heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> hip reference <laughs> <laughs> it's a hip reference let's spin it again it has landed on taking back the flag for the left that was mine okay I've been really annoyed at how the right gets to use the American flag to you know, represent all their shitty ideas. And um, I feel like the left, like we're the ones that really love our country and really love the people in it and really want to, <laughs> thanks, and really want to help Americans be educated and healthy and uh, be able to have like a house and you take care of your family and eat and all the things that make America great. And when everyone's doing well, everyone does well. And I don't know why we can't have the American flag be like our symbol because we're the real Americans. I'm with that. I agree. I like the flag. I do too. And like if you wear anything with a flag on it, people are like, I did not know that about you. Like <laughs> that, that I love my country, that I want to pay taxes so I can help my country. Like that's, yeah. Okay. I agree. Thanks. That's my rant. Thank you, Judy. Let's spin it again. It's so delightful when she rants. It is. It has landed on the dehumanization of the service industry. I believe that was Chris. Yeah, that was me. I, I, I got to say, I know that the scan the QR code thing started because of the pandemic, but now we're all here without masks on and there's no more plastic barriers between us. And I really wish that I could have quick, joyful human interactions again. And I feel really bad when I go to a place and like you scan a QR code and then you push what you want on your phone and then they push the box in front of you and you just tap it and it's like the quickest version. They don't even take your card anymore. And I feel like that's sad for me. And I don't know, maybe the people in the service industry are glad they don't have to like deal with assholes as much. But I also feel like it has to feel sad for them. Like they're just an extension of all this technology now. And sometimes I feel like these interactions have gotten to a point where it almost feels like the people behind the counter. It's almost like talking to someone who, who's like in a relationship where they feel like their boyfriend is watching to see if they mess up, you know, like yeah. it feels abusive. And, and, uh, I don't know, like when I go to a store sometimes, you know, certainly I need that croissant and I want that tea I ordered, but I also just kind of want to have 30 seconds where I have a quick little meaningless interaction where I, as someone asks me how I'm doing and I say good and I ask them how they're doing and they say good and it doesn't ultimately matter to either of us, but, um, but I need that. I need that. I need to get away from the pressures of my life for those things. And that's how you feel like part of a community. And that's how you feel like part of humanity. And it's weird because I do feel like, yeah, no, this is just ranting, but it's like uh, the fact that we're still using these systems also makes me feel like on some level we're going to find out that these things that we use 
are better for the corporate bottom line of these places and that we're just leaving the people out of them because somehow it's making some asshole more money. And I just don't like that feeling. I just don't like that feeling. And I want to bring the humanity back. And, um, and yeah, I, I, it's real, it feels like if they could just have a QR code, hand me my food, they would at this point. And I don't like it. I don't like things being delivered to my front door and then the delivery person like scurries away and the thing is there. I don't like scanning and using everything humanity being filtered through a, a, a microchip at some point in the process. It feels really bad. Yeah. <laughs> Let's spin it again. <laughs> it has landed on mantras. Mantras. Thank you so much. That's me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wow. Okay. I just want to say before, I, I am curious for, for kids how lacking that community of interaction is going to, you know, if you're like zero to four now, like what is that going to look like in 20 years in terms of how you interact with people? It was a thought I had, so. Yeah, they're going to be weird. These little ones are going to be weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whoa. My kid's four. <laughs> okay, well, sit up straight for this one. Um, <laughs> Mantras. Mantras. Uh, I am an Indian person. You can tell by my face and your eyes. And, and because it is such a difficult time politically, I'm trying to like, think of some words to live by that would help me kind of like get through a lot of the news that's been coming out, especially regarding, you know, pregnancy, abortions, women's bodies. And so, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine and I didn't want to talk to a comedian because we are shitty and judgmental people. Uh, so I, I went on a hike with a friend of mine who was a surfer um, and I went with him because he's very optimistic. He says things like, the sun is awesome, <laughs> you know, just when you're walking. And so we're walking up this hill and we're going at like a nice adult pace and we're having like a good conversation. He's like helping me get my head in a good place. Um, but the only trouble was we were with his three-year-old and he's having trouble keeping up because of his tiny stubby legs, you know? And we didn't slow down because we don't care about him, you know? Right. So right. he was going like too slowly and this was going on for like a mile or two and he kept up for like a mile and then he started sobbing openly and then he pissed his pants because he's a three-year-old with the emotional coping mechanisms of a three-year-old. Just, you know, you yeah, get it, Judy. Sucks. Um <laughs> And so now he's sobbing. We have to stop the conversation. Okay, we have to go to a, uh, like a picnic area. We hang his, his uh, pants over a tree. And at this point, I'm pissed because, you know, it's like this wasn't about him, you know? Yeah. This was about like something I needed, right? right? Um, right. And now he's running around naked Sucks. with his, like from the waist down, like just his, like, and his dick's Donald hanging Duck out. It, yeah. Exactly. And then he's like, he's running around. And then just to add insult to injury, it's like this kid starts hugging my back. <laughs> so now I have to say to his father, oh, hey, Jamie, could you tell your kid to take his dick off my back? Right. Right. And now Jamie, right? And he was like, because remember, he's optimistic. And he was like, oh, you can tell him. Oh, he needs to learn to listen to other people. Chris, you know? <laughs> and then I was like, no, you tell him. And I was like, your dick made his dick. You tell him to get his dick off my back. But don't you see, John? That's the mantra all along. Those were the words to live by that I was looking at. That was the revelation I had in that moment because what better phrase could get you through, through like what is going on currently in the political climate than, listen to it, get your dick off my back. Get your dick. Get your dick off my back. Off my back. It's like, say it with me. It just is very cathartic. Get your dick. Get off my back. Get your dick. It's a lot of white people here, and they are not good with unison. I was like, call and response. Honestly, I believe I feel very uncomfortable sitting behind everybody right now in this <laughs> high chair. Get your dick. This feels like it was a setup from the start. <laughs> Nathan Fielder, come on out here. <laughs> That's right. It's all part of it. Um, I really like that. It's also, by the way, your second 
rant here that had a call and response. There was remember you did a pizza rant with them and made them all shout about pizza once. I didn't make them shout about pizza. I just made them clap. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine. They didn't really call in response. This time they did okay, but Chris needs to get your dick. That was good, guys. That was really good. And that honestly, was good. a great place to leave it. Uh, and that's the rant wheel. <laughs> <laughs>